Hello, so I'm going to get round to doing the test now of this sort of thermoplastic sheet I bought off of Amazon using several knives and a war hammer. Now, in my personal opinion, none of these are going to penetrate it, and I've also got it on a carpet on a concrete floor. Um, whenever I do these, if I do any sort of test on a soft thing, people say that's not realistic, you need to do it on a hard surface and vice versa, so you can't win in that regard unless you do all of the tests, I guess, in one video. But anyway. I really don't think any of these things are going to penetrate, some of them might leave some deep gouges in it, but considering the pistol crossbow only went in maybe 2mm, and this is a centimetre thick piece, I really don't think any of these knives or sort of tools are going to go all the way through. So first let's try the AK bayonet, I'm basically just going to do overhead sort of stabs of all of these like that, um, and then we'll see if anything happens, but I think... Because the pistol crossbow won't penetrate, I don't think any of these are going to go all the way through. And then what I'll do is, at a later point, I'll do full-size crossbow tests and they might go through. So right, first the AKM bayonet, or AK-74 bayonet. That's literally doing nothing. Yeah, makes little gouges, that's it. And again, I'm sure I'll always get the comments as, oh, you're too weak, I could stab that much stronger than you. Maybe you could, but again, this stuff is really strong for a reason. All right, Fairbind Sykes, this generally has the most impact on something like this. And as you can see, that actually sticks in as of its own weight. But that's probably only gone maybe two millimetres in at most, probably not even that. Yeah, as you can see, that's not going to go through it. If you had a very thin piece of this that was like a millimetre thick, that Fairbind Sykes might get through it due to its sort of shape and, you know, how fine the point is on it. Other than that, no. Right, let's try the Swiss bayonet. Again, not really even doing anything. You know, this would go very easily for a lot of things, but for some reason, you know, the tip barely even goes into this. I think it seems on this that the thinner the point is, the better it penetrates into this. So, you know, some sort of bodkin type head on an arrow might go through it. Um, but it seems that, you know, actual general knife shapes won't go through it at all. So last but not, not least, I'll do both sides of it for interest. But the Warhammer weapon collector made me, Mike, which is really nice. So thank you for him to making it for me. I need to give that a bit of a polish though, because I can see there's a bit of rust where I've had my hands on bits of it before. So let's try the spike first. That's actually hurting my ears from the um, loudness of the impact, but um, as you can see, it makes a mark, but that's it. If I use the hammer side, yeah, hurts my ears, but that's it. As you can see, no fracturing or anything to the other side. With a couple of the impacts, I don't know which ones they were, I imagine they're the pistol crossbow impacts. There's slight bulging to the plastic there, but that's it. A little bit of back face deformation, but nothing really serious at all. So there you go. Um, I think what this proves is if you bought one of these or cut one of these to the size you wanted, these would be very, very good to include in the stab proof vest, stab resistant vest, you know, as like a really high sort of strength section. If you had a bit covering your like heart and your lungs or something, you know, because some stab proof vests have the pockets for putting back up like little plates in them. Um, I think these would be absolutely excellent to stop basically anything anybody could possibly stab you with sort of, you know, in sort of a street or security situation from getting through. So, as we said, the Fairbind Sykes comes the closest to getting through, and that still doesn't get anywhere near deep enough. Um, you know, it falls out when you do that, but, yeah, if you add this in front of, you know, a regular Kevlar vest or stab-resistant vest, um, there's an extra backup panel, maybe one that was five millimetres thick, not even the one centimetre thick bit, you know, a smaller sort of rounded one, just for comfortably fitting in a little vest pocket. Um, or, you know, well, not the little vest pocket, but you know what I mean, like the little sort of um, pouches they have on these sort of um, body armour type vests, I think this would do really well. So there you go, this stuff can be bought fairly cheaply now online. Probably the biggest gouges I've made in it, as you might be able to see, are the ones there from a sword hitting it. So, for example, what that was basically, and this isn't really sharp with the AK bayonet, was just sort of doing that to it. 
it seems the most deformation you can ever get to this is chipping away at the edges and even then that's going to take a lot of attempts to get through and as we've always said with these sort of things you know the idea isn't if you've got one of these that you let somebody stab you over and over and over in the attempt to get through it the idea is that you know you're fighting back or you're fleeing or whatever um, but you know I certainly think this might give you a better survival chance or a very good survival chance if you had this included in a you know a stab vest even if it was a thinner version of it um, yeah, let's just out of interest see what happens if, I don't know if the shock's going to really hurt my wrist, if the uh, Warhammer hits the um, bit here. Yeah, as you can see, that puts quite big dents into it there. So yeah, the weakest side of this is definitely the edges. Um, knocked that flame. But yeah, that takes quite big chips out of it doing that, or at least, you know, reshapes the plastic. But yeah, in terms of, you know, somebody trying to attack you with a knife, this is going to be really, really good at protecting you. So there you go. Um, what we've learned from this is what we expected, basically, that it's very, very good at providing stab protection. So the next time I test this will probably definitely be of the full size crossbows. And that's where I think with enough power behind the crossbow and the right sort of tip, you know, like a bodkin tip or a very fine um, broadhead, you know, the ones that aren't really all that broad of a broadhead, but just quite a sharp dagger like. You know, if you imagine the Fairbind Sykes, but as an arrowhead, they're the ones with enough force that might get through. But in terms of general protection, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody um, with a standard sort of kitchen knife, whatever, is, has any chance of getting through one of these. So they would be quite good for, um, as said, reinforcing sort of existing armour with.